Hello and welcome to this page of tutorial. Um, in the second video, we're going to talk about uh, multi-state components and we're going to build this feature here of our app which essentially lets us give a movie a rating and use these uh, cute stars to show what the rating is. Um, to recontextualize, uh, we have our React component right here. So essentially, this is our React app. It's just a single file. and uh, Again, page draw does not require any external JavaScript libraries or anything like that. This is just plain old React code, okay? Except that the render function is entirely generated by page draw. So we're importing this app render from page draw slash artboard. And what we do is in render, we just return it and pass it some props. The constructor and the event handlers are just implemented in good old uh, React. Um, also, we have page draw sync running in the background here, which is just uh, syncing all of our compiled code straight into our GitHub repo. And we have a Webpack server that's running in the background for our dev server right here. Cool. So now I want to start by talking about components. Remember in the last video that I said that every time you draw an artboard in page draw like this one, you're actually defining a component. What did I mean by that? So if you click add here, you're going to see that we have all of these primitive block types like text, rectangle, oval, but we also have these component block types. In this case, we only have one, because we only define one artboard so far, and it happens to be called just artboard. Uh, you could change the name and it would be called something else. So let's try to click on this and draw it to see what happens. Okay, so you're gonna see uh, something that vaguely reminds, you, reminds us of like this uh, first screen but it has like some error message here and the image is not showing. So why is that? Essentially, this is an instance of the component on the left, okay? But the instance, what an instance is, is essentially uh, taking the, the component's definition and evaluating it given some data, okay? Remember that last time we said that like some things here had dynamic data. We can go back to see what those are by clicking in the code sidebar and just uh, clicking on these uh, code uh, text inputs. And this one that says image source is responsible for this image uh, that appears right here. And the title is of course responsible for the title up there. Okay, so what is happening in our instance is that we're trying to evaluate these variables, but we're uh, getting an error because the, the variables are never defined within our component. So again, components are kind of like function calls and we are using the variables inside this uh, process image source, but we're never defining what the arguments of the function call is. Uh, we got away with this so far because we're just using this component in the context of our React app here. But if we want to see the instance, uh, we're going to have to actually def define what the props are going to be. The way to do this is you go to object inputs here at the top of the code sidebar of the component, and you click add, and we're going to add a prop called title, which is of type just string. And we're going to have another prop called uh, image source, which is of type uh, image. Very cool. So now if we click on the instance and go to the draw sidebar, these props are automatically become uh, essentially properties that you can override right here. So title, I'm going to just going to say hello world. And image source, I'm going to pick another image that I have here locally of the Back to the Future movie. Cool. So instance blocks are essentially um, the render function that this artboard or this component generates with some props that you specify in the sidebar, okay? Um, so uh, this is really cool because we can, we can now even like generate random props and see what this render function, again, of this React component on the left would uh, be with different uh, randomized props. So if I click on this, you're gonna get some different text and different image that we pull from uh, a random database. Very cool. So components are not that interesting when you're talking about top level pages, uh, because again, this instance is essentially just a preview here. I don't really use it in my app uh, per se, because what this is doing is kind of the same thing that this calling code uh, up here is doing, just calling the, the page draw render function generated by the artboard on the left. Okay, so when this is a page, it's not that uh, compelling, especially because we already have this uh, preview right here. So it gets a lot more interesting if we're making 
real smaller components are going to be used inside of our artboard here. That's going to be the case with the little star that you saw in the demo before. So I copy pasted these three different stars uh, in here. And if you select the three of them, these are going to just PNGs and I resize them to be size 40. Um, if you select all of them, you get this make multi-state button right here. So you can click on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a different, slightly fancier type of component. Okay. So this is a, what we call a multi-state component. All of these three, these are artboards, actually the ones, there are three artboards inside, but um, they don't each define their own component. What happens is that the multi-state group defines one component and it has different states, okay? This is kind of, from a developer standpoint, what an if would be, um, but it, it lets you do different states in the same app. Okay, so you can just draw them side by side. And these states have names, the default state one, state two, and so forth. And we're gonna see that our component already came with some uh, props automatically created. Actually, just one prop. Uh, again, in the code sidebar of the component, it's called state, and this is going to essentially define what the state of the uh, instance would be. And it's going to have default state one, state two options. Let me actually change those names into uh, state two is going to be filled, and state one I'm going to be so, I'm going to do something slightly fancier, which is um, I'm gonna say highlighted, that's just the name. And if I do colon hover, page draw is gonna be smart enough to pick this up and know that, uh, uh, and know to use CSS to make it into a hover state. So essentially when you hover your mouse over it, that state's gonna be triggered automatically. Cool, uh, so you notice that this just changed actually the object input. So this is uh, defining the type of what the state the, the, this uh, state type is. It's if that drop down has these three options. Okay, this just defines what you're going to get in the sidebar when you click and draw here. It has these three types. But you actually have to change the names of the artboards themselves to uh, make this uh, work. So you can use the sidebar here because I have to be slightly careful to pick not the image but the artboard itself. And you have to change the name from state two into uh, filled and from state one into um, I called it highlighted colon hover cool. let me move move this one a little bit over so we don't overlap cool now I get this instance and I can change its state and it's gonna change right there awesome and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it inside of this artboard. One thing, if you have uh, you've already noticed this, maybe you already did, um, if there are two blocks that are overlapping, we create these, we, we show these red lines, red dash lines, which can be a little bit confusing at first. What this is doing is that um, essentially PageRoute doesn't handle well today uh, blocks are overlapping, so this is just showing to you uh, that they are overlapping, so you should fix that. If you really want to have overlapping blocks, there are definitely ways around it, and we'll cover this in a future video. Okay, so you have the star in here, and you can use option and drag to copy it. You can also use just control C, control V, that, all, that works too. So I'm making five stars. And I'm going to select all of them. Again, I'm going to use the align here to make them centered. And I can change what we call their static values to make them look filled. Cool. So if you look at our app right now, it should all just work. So let's recap what Pedro is doing there. If we click on export, we're going to now have generated code for two different uh, components. One is just the artboard. That's the main one. And one is the multi-state group, which is the star. You could actually, let's rename this to a better name, star. And we're going to see the page is automatically going to handle the name change for us. Put in a different file, it's called star.jsx. And artboard is just requiring the star here. And it's calling it as a regular React component. Passing it as state and as props. Cool. So, and here we are also already handling the, the hover for you because of that uh, funny uh, colon hover uh, name that we added before. So awesome, we're almost done. 
The only thing that we need uh, left is to be able to click on these and change uh, which ones are selected, okay, which ones are filled. The way we're going to do that is we're going to define what the state of, the, of this uh, uh, star should be dynamically for each star. Okay, so you see that the state here is just filled, and this is always going to be filled unless you hover over it. Um, so now what we can do is also with props of uh, instance blocks, you can also make them dynamic, just like the text content before. So make this dynamic, and we can actually make all of them dynamic. All of them mark them as dynamic. So that means that they're going to be defined by some data somehow, and again. After you mark the dynamic, if we go to the code sidebar, you get all of these text inputs where you can put some what what should the code be for those guys. Okay, so I'm gonna actually have a rating. I'm gonna add a rating here in the state of my app, which is just gonna be a number between zero and five. Okay, rating is three, and I'm gonna add a very simple. Um, actually, I'll, I'll add the, the, the event handle later. Let's just make sure that this works. So with a rating, what I actually want to do is um, uh, this.props.rating, and I'm using a ternary operator from JavaScript. If this.props.rating is greater than one, I want to have this filled. Else, I want to have it be default. So just to see that this worked, we can go to React App here, and actually it won't work because it's going to say unexpected token because the state is going to be coming from dynamic. But again, uh, as these red uh, over uh, these red borders here are telling us, we still haven't filled up the variables for for these uh, different states. So let's actually finish that up, and then we'll be able to see it uh, in our dev environment. So if there's a props at rating greater than two. This is a process of rating greater than three. I'm just copy pasting those. Greater than four. Greater than five. The general idea is that you should never have logic that's too complicated inside of PageRaw. If if you do, you should probably factor that out into uh, your actual React code and just call it from PageDraw in here. But some simple logic like this is fine. So again, now if we go to the React app, bam, it is working. Um, it just so happens that this props rating is not uh, okay. So uh, this props rating is not being caught here, so it's, it's doing zero. Why is that? It's because we're not passing it down as a prop to our React render function. So I actually have to say rating equals this dot state dot rating, just like we did before. And if I refresh, the rating is. Two, awesome. And actually the rating being three, I actually wanted to say greater or equal. Sorry about that. Or equal, greater or equal, greater or equal. Nice, three. Cool, the only thing we have left to do is to uh, allow, uh, allow our users to click on this to change the rating. So let's start by doing a change or a set rating function that takes uh, some n to what we're we gonna set this, and it's just gonna do this a set state. Again, this is just React's regular set state. There's nothing page specific here. Um, rating is n, and we have to pass that in again as props to our uh, app render. So set rating equals this dot set rating dot bind this. Okay, so now what we can do is in each of these guys and each of the stars, we can add an event handler that on click it does this dot props dot set rating. Um, in this case, one. And actually, I need uh, this function. I need to lazily do this. Otherwise, I will actually do the set rating uh, 
whenever the render, render function is called, which is I don't want to do. I want to, when something is clicked, I want to do this at set rating one, exactly. And I'll just copy paste this code again to do in the next one, non-click for the same thing with two. And here, non-click for the same thing with three. And same thing with four. And finally, same thing with five. Now if I go to our React app, and, oh, I missed the params there. That wasn't valid JavaScript. Um, there we go. Cool, so now if I click on any of these, it should select and set a rating for us. Awesome, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is the end of the second video. In the next video, we're gonna talk about repeat blocks so we can do this feature here that lets you add comments. See you in the next video.